Good morning students. Welcome to SRPS Online Studies. We are going to start our chapter number 12 which we had already completed our part 1 of class 7. Uh, we had started our uh, chapter number 12 uh, transportation of materials in plants and animals of class 7. Ok student. So, in part 1 what we had discussed about? We had in part 1 we discussed about that uh, uh, how the materials is transported in plants and animals, what how many types of uh, one uh, vascular tissues are present in the plants, where xylem and phloem, what are the function, what are the structure, what are the structure of and function of xylem and phloem, okay. And uh, what about then how the uh, water and minerals is transported in plants. Today we are going to discuss about the second topic in part 2 that is transportation of food. We all know about it that the food is prepared in plants in the leaf part. So, how the, how the uh, food is transported from their leaf part to all over the parts of our body. So, as for that the food prepared by the leaves is transported to all parts of the plant in the form of a solution through a process known as translocation ok. So, by the help of process translocation it transported the food. Translocation take place through the cells of a phloem. Phloem has a cells called sieve tubes that are placed one above then another ok. So, by these long they form a long tubes through which food is transported. Understand student what they want to say? They say that the that the, that in the leaf part food is prepared, and you have to uh, you have to transport that food part into the hole over of the plant. So the process by which the food is transported by all over to the plant that is called translocation. So translocation, how the translocation take place? How the food is going to one part to another? So in this part, they are saying that the phloem have a sieve tubes. So in sieve tubes, what happened? that are placed one above then another in just form that they form a long tube when by which food is transported. So, the contents of phloem can move in upward as well as in the downward direction whereas water in xylem moves only in the upward direction. See student this one is a main important difference between the xylem and phloem movement that the xylem if they transport water and minerals they have to be transported to one side only in the upward direction ok. And when we are talking about the phloem so we know about that that it flow in both direction upwards also and downwards also ok. Clear into your mind that how the transportation of food is going to take place in plants ok. Now, the second term is transpiration. I know that you all know about well known about this term transpiration. You all know in the you have already studied in your 6th and 7th class uh, in 7th class also you are going to study. Uh, so, uh, let us see large quantities of water are absorbed by a plant for photosynthesis ok. Large quantities of water are there and they are be absorbed, absorbed by the plant for photosynthesis. All this water is not used by the plant. So, what happened now this excess water? This excess water escapes in the form of water vapor mainly through the stromata present in the leaves. Understand student? plant is there and roots are there they absorb most of the plant most of the water uh, by the help of their roots as for photosynthesis but all this water is not being used in that. So, the excess water which escapes in the form of water vapor mainly through the stromata present in the leaves. So, the process of losing water so the process of losing water in the form of water vapor understand and keep this point in a mind that what is transpiration. Again I am repeating the process of losing water in the form of water vapor. Water the wat water whatever the part the water we the plants lose the water part in the form of water vapor that process is called our transpiration. Transpiration of water in the leaves creates a suction pull which pulls uh, if the transpiration process there so it creates a suction pull in a plant which pulls a water up from the uh, up the plant from the roots. The, if the suction force is there then what happened? The suction force allow the water from the roots part to the upper part ok. So, it is a strong enough to force water high up to pop, uh, water up high trees 
as water is given out by transpiration more water is absorbed transpiration also cools the plant if water is lost through transpiration more quickly than it is absorbed by the root hairs also okay so this flow is going to be uh, going again and again the plant cells will lose water the leaves stems and flowers will droop okay so this is called wilting understand student one new term is there wilting that what is that if there is an a lack of water uh, if there is a lack of water the so plant cells will lose water so the leaves what happens so the leaves stems and flowers are getting droop and this is called our wilting okay students so we all know about it that this one is a main thing now the next one is topic is transportation in humans okay so beside the part of transportation in plants uh, now we are going in to study about the second part of this chapter that the transportation in humans okay students so we all know that that the transportation in humans is there said so we a b all are human beings so we see that so many materials are there inside our body which is transported every time so the process of diffusion is too slow to work in higher animals including humans also we are saying it previously na so that that transportation take place by the two methods one is by the diffusion process and one by the process by the vascular tissues so uh, that is a main reason that they, they are saying that the process of diffusion is very slow and it is not been applied in higher animals or even in the human beings also in such animals a well developed pick up and delivery system known as a uh, circulatory system is present so in that type of higher animals what type of system is there circulatory system is present so in the circulatory system what is there the blood delivers food and oxygen to every cell in the body in our body also we know that the blood is there and it delivers food and oxygen to every part every cell of the in the body it also carries waste away from every cell in the body okay it also carries the waste part also and it also gives the food and oxygen also so the circulatory system consists of blood blood vessels and heart so in our circulatory system in human beings or in higher animals it consists of three parts that is first one is blood second is blood vessels and the third one is the and the third one is heart 